Today we're going to be talking about core training, exactly what your core is and some of my most effective exercises to work each area of your core. So what is your core? Well, it's not what most people think. Now, when most people think core, they automatically think the stuff you can see, your abdominals, your six pack abs. Well, yes, that's technically part of your core, but that's not your entire core. Now, your core muscles are actually every single muscle that influence your lumbar, pelvic, and hip region and hip stability. So they're muscles that kind of control everything around that lumbar, pelvic, and hip complex. And when we're talking about core training, we're not necessarily talking about flexion, rotation, and things like that. We're talking about resisting motions. And that's some of the things we're gonna get into later in this video are those anti-exercises, those resisting exercises and resisting motions. So what muscles exactly are your core? Well, we're talking about your rectus abdominis, your six pack abs that you can see. We're talking about your internal and external obliques, your transverse abdominis, which is almost like kind of like a corset muscle that kind of goes and kind of wraps all the way around the back. And then we're also talking about things like your glutes because your glutes influence your hip, your pelvis and tilt of that. Your glutes are also technically part of your core, which we're gonna be covering later in this video. So come along and let me show you some of my favorite go-to exercises to work each part. So let's talk about flexion-based exercises to work your core. Now, these are exercises that work your core, but more specifically your rectus abdominis. And that's the muscle kind of responsible for pulling your rib cage down towards your pelvis and flexing your spine. Now, there's some research many years ago um, that many people have debunked, suggesting that flexion-based exercises are dangerous for your spine. Whereas, in fact, they're not, and they can be an important part of your programming, especially if you're trying to target your six pack abs, your rectus abdominis muscle. So I'm gonna show you some basic abdominal crunches using this ab mat. Now, the reason we use the ab mat is because A, it's really good for allowing us to focus on that flexion based movement and kind of getting a full wrap around of the spine and getting full extension in that full range of motion, that, that loaded kind of stretch at the back. Um, and also second off, it it's just a really great kind of training option to throw in there if you're concerned with getting too much flexion through your spine. It can somewhat limit the amount of flexion cycles that you're going through with that spine. So it's a really good training option. So what we're gonna do with this ab mat, we're gonna have the highest end closest to our tailbone. So from there, all I'm gonna do is set myself up into a basic abdominal crunch position, but I'm gonna start by wrapping my spine around the abdominal mat. So here, all I'm doing is I'm thinking about getting my rib cage really expanded and keeping my pelvis down. Now, when we're talking about crunches, your only thought should be about closing the space between your rib cage and your pelvis. So we close that space and we shorten our rectus abdominis by doing so. So all I'm gonna do is have my hands behind my ears. I'm gonna get that maximum kind of wrap around the abdominal mat. And then I'm gonna think about closing that space between my rib cage and my pelvis, really contracting as I exhale at the top to fully shorten that six pack muscle, that rectus abdominis. So I'm getting that full wrap around and then shorten position right there. Now, if you wanna make things a little bit easier, all you need to be doing from here is reducing the lever arm by having your hands by your sides. So having your hands by your sides make those a whole lot easier. This can be a little bit harder. This can be even harder. And then hands over my head, because that lever arm's even greater, can be even harder. If you wanna take those up another level, then you can even have a plate over your head or held on your chest. So that's how you're gonna be working your six pack abs and performing crunch type movements to full effect. 
While flexion-based exercises like abdominal crunches tend to preferentially target your upper abdominals, your upper rectus abdominis, exercises where you're focusing more on a posterior tilt of your pelvis, so leg raise, reverse crunch variations, and things like that, tend to actually recruit your lower abdominals, your lower six-pack abs, a little bit better than crunch type motions. So if you wanna build your lower abs or preferentially target your lower abs, here's how to effectively perform reverse crunches using a decline bench. So all I'm gonna be doing on my decline bench is having my butt down the bottom end. I'm gonna grab a nice tight grip over my head. You might wanna grab here, but here's gonna be most comfortable for me today. That adjusts that depending on you. And where I see most people making a mistake with this is pulling their knees directly up towards their chest, like so. Now what actually happens when you're putting your knees towards your chest, you're reducing that lever arm and kind of unloading your abdominals at the top. Instead, what you want to be doing is firing your knees straight up. So we're going to tuck our knees and push up to keep maximum load on our abdominals throughout the entire range of motion. So we're always pushing our knees up towards the roof. What we can do is we can make those even easier. Now to make those easier, you can either use a flat bench or with one of these great benches like this, you can just reduce the degree of decline. Or if you wanna make them even harder, you can make it more of an incline as well. You can also do hanging leg raises using, for example, your rack, where most of that load on your lower abdominals is more in the top part of the, the exercise itself. With a decline bench like this, you get a good amount of loading throughout the entire range of motion. We've gone through our flexion-based exercises, so our abdominal crunches and our reverse crunches. Now, they're really great for isolating your rectus abdominis, but if you really want a lot of bang for your buck with your core training, then anti-extension exercises like I'm about to show you in just a second with an ab will rollout are a really good option for that. Now, what I mean by anti-extension is you know, we've just been producing flexion or creating flexion and posterior tilt of the pelvis with those reverse uh, leg raises, but resisting is all about resisting that extension. So it's actually keeping our spine in a relatively kind of natural, neutral position throughout. So as we're kind of applying that force, we're not actually, we're kind of resisting that force force pushing us back and extending and flexing our spine. So this is a good anti-extension exercise. So we're resisting extension with this one. So ab wheel rollout, you'll need obviously an abdominal wheel and a knee mat if you've got them. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off in a slight degree of flexion with this one, okay? You can start more neutral, it's nice to kind of start here just to kind of get that spine a little bit of flexion to start off with. And all I'm gonna think about doing is pushing my hips forwards so rather than hands, it's hips forwards. As I extend my hips, I'm gonna get myself as low as I can. Now, if that's as far as I can make it, that's absolutely fine. But in an ideal world, full range of motion is nose to floor, okay? So as you notice, in that position, as I come all the way out, my spine is resisting extension. So I'll just give you a couple more reps of that, just so you can see. So it's out. I'm resisting that kind of extension to there and then pulling back. So there are a couple of ways you can make this one easier. The best option for me or what I've always found is actually to set up in front of a wall. So you can set up in front of a wall and the wall kind of becomes that limiting factor. So you might set up maybe, uh, I don't know, half a meter in front of the wall and if that's your range of motion, then that's absolutely fine. One week you can start there, next week you can start a little bit further away from the wall until you get that full range of motion where you no longer need to set up in front of the wall. To make things a little bit easier with an ab wheel rollout, many people do them standing. Personally, I'm not a fan of the standing variation. It does require a lot, a lot more kind of hip flexor activation within that. So I tend to program more band resisted abdominal wheel rollouts, but then also you can do abdominal wheel rollouts with a weighted vest, or even if you want to be a little bit funky, you can throw some chains over your shoulders to really kind of resist that extension on the way down. So that's your anti-extension exercise to work your entire core. Give that one a shot.
The next part of your core we're going to be talking about is your internal and external obliques. Now your internal obliques are kind of just underneath and they work along with your transverse abdominus, almost like a kind of a corset effect. So they're really important in those resisting type motions. Your external obliques are those obliques that you can kind of see. Now it's those that we're going to be targeting through more rotational type movements and lateral flexion type movements. And one of the best exercises that you can do anywhere where you're going to be creating that rotation is the good old Russian twist. Now what we're going to be doing here is just using a medicine ball for this. So we're going to make sure our heels are firmly planted in towards the floor. We're going to have our medicine ball just kind of a few inches away from our chest to start off with. And I'm just going to lean back until I can find a little bit of tension there. Now all I'm going to do is focus on rotating my shoulders over to one side, keep my core engaged and then back towards the middle and then to the other side. Now if I want to make this even harder, all I need to do is just reach that a little bit further out. So in that position there, it becomes a whole lot harder. If I want to make it easier, I can even get rid of the ball and I can just use my hands if I want to just to get that technique as well. There's plenty of other options that you can use to train your external obliques as well. So for example, landmine variations, standing twists, uh, you can use cables, you can even use a resistance band for twists. So those are some of my go-to exercises to work your external obliques. We've spoken about resisting extension, so those anti-extension exercises like the ab wheel rollout we walked you through. But when it comes to anti-rotational exercises, you're a little bit more limited for choice. However, one of the best variations are actually one of the easiest and most simple to set up anywhere, and that's a band pal-off press. Now, with a pal-off press, all we're gonna do is attach our band to, well, anything really. It could be uh, a a garden post or it can be something like a rack if you've got one. You can literally do these anywhere. All I'm going to do is grab that resistance band and just step out, just get myself into kind of an athletic position here which is just nice soft knees with my hips back. And then what I'm going to do is just press that band out directly in front of me. Now what you'll notice is as I press that band out, that band's obviously pulling me back in that direction towards it. So I'm resisting that rotation and that's where that anti-rotation kind of comes into things. Now from here, as I say, it's a, it's a power press, but there's a lot of things you can do with this position as well. So we can stand here, we can resist, and then pull back and just have another breath, and resist again, and come back. Or we can do things like play about with letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, that's a really good option if you get bored with things like that. We can also go to like overhead variations, Again, I'm always resisting that pull back to there. We can even get ourselves in like half kneeling positions, resisting in that. There's loads of variations just in that one exercise in that pan off press. If you want to make things harder, I'm sure you can use a heavier resistance band. You can also try things with, with cables as well. If you've got a cable column that you can adjust to the right height and obviously just progress that load over time. But you've got plenty of options with the Paloff Press that you can try. And as I say, it's a great exercise to develop that anti-rotational strength. <laughs> So for our anti-lateral flexion, I'm going to show you how to perform a suitcase deadlift. We're going to be using a kettlebell for this, but equally you can use a sandbag by your side, or some people that are a little bit more daring can even load a barbell to one side as well. So we've got a kettlebell, and all we're going to do is just stand with that kettlebell just outside of our heels. We're going to sit ourselves down now, almost as though we're going to grab a bar in front of us for a standard deadlift, but instead Instead, we're going to grab that kettlebell on one side. Now, as soon as you grab that kettlebell, obviously, you're being pulled in this direction. Now, the job of your core is obviously to resist that and make sure you stay central the entire time. So, I'm going to grab that kettlebell, stand up. As I said, I'm resisting being pulled back in this direction. And just like you've got a suitcase at the busy airport, you're going to sit down. It's that nice deadlift. Touch and go between each rep. 
And then once you've finished on one side, you can step over to the other and repeat your reps on the other side. So that's a really great anti-lateral flexion exercise that gives you a lot of bang for your buck. Your glutes are probably the most forgotten core muscle, and that's because most people don't think of your glutes as part of your core. But remember, your core is any muscle that influences your lumbar, pelvic, and hip region, and arguably your glutes are one of the most important of that entire group of muscles. So some of the best exercises to work your glutes are more bridge-focused exercise or hip thrust-focused exercises, where your knees are in a bent knee position and you're bridging up. Here's how to do one with just a simple resistance band to get some load if you don't have a lot of equipment around for, for example, heavy barbell hip thrusts. All I'm gonna do is just lie down on my mat and then my knees are kind of in a 90 degree position there. Without using my elbows on the floor pushing down, I'm just gonna kind of rest them there. And then from there, all I'm gonna do is initiate by squeezing my butt and then pushing through my heels to raise up, squeeze my butt nice and hard at the top and then lower down. Now what the band's doing, is that it's resisting, or I'm resisting, my glutes are having to resist it pulling in. So I'm working those hip external rotators and abductors at the same time. So it's really kicking in all my glute muscles as I'm performing those bridges. Just with that small band, it's a massive challenge. Obviously, if you want to make these even harder, then you can use heavy barbell hip thrusts or glute bridges if you've got access to a barbell. You can even throw a sandbag on or even a dumbbell across your hips as well. There's a famous saying out there when it comes to abs, and that's that abs are made in the kitchen. Whereas I actually disagree. Whilst abs are carved in the kitchen, they're actually built in the gym. They're built using resistance. They're built using you know, pieces of kit like you see here as well that kind of help optimize your technique and load your abdominals in the most efficient way possible. So if you wanna unveil your abs, then just being in a, a calorie deficit for a while, that's gonna help unveil your abs. But if you want some athletic abs, some abs that really look good, then you're gonna to need to build them. And to build them, you're gonna be using a variety of techniques and a variety of exercises, all of which we've kind of gone through today. So rather than just focus on, on just one or two movement patterns, just for example, flexion-based patterns um, or rotational-based patterns, you wanna be including a variety of the exercises and movement patterns that we've all covered today. If you've got any questions about anything covered today, then drop them in the comments below.